you. Thank you very much. And it's always great to be in Berlin. And I will say that the um, mobility revolution will obviously start from cities, and in particular, the shift that we need towards a green, sustainable, and efficient mobility will be centered in cities. And this is not just because in 2050 we will have around 70% of the world population living in cities, but also because really changing mobility, and if you live in a city or manage a city, you know what I'm talking about, is really about uh, human behavior. It's about citizen-centric uh, mobility. And so it will take us a long time in order to change the way we live in our cities and to change our collective behaviors. So I've been the Digital um, Technology Commissioner for the City of Barcelona, the CTO, for the last four years. So I'm going to talk about practical example of what it means to build a smart city that is, that is human-centric and that is based around data sovereignty and has mobility and the energy transition at the very core of it. So this was my job as a commissioner in Barcelona, building the digital city roadmap uh, about digital transformation digital innovation and digital empowerment and what we did was really starting citizen first so for us the smart city it's not a technology driven approach we do not start from connectivity 5g big data and only ask after we ask why do we need technology at all why do we need the smart city at all we started people first and then only after we started to look at how we can use technology and data to really serve the people. So we hear a lot about smart city all around the world and of course we have many different models to become a smart city but I think the central question and this is a financial uh, times article that was comparing the two big models about smart city. Toronto on one side a smart city that is built by Google and Barcelona on the other side a democratic smart city that is built bottom up with people at the core and an open infrastructure that can allow honest competition and local startup and local, local companies to drive. And this is what we've been building for the last four years. So as I was telling you before, the Smart City is about tackling the big societal, environmental and social challenges that we're facing. Affordable housing, healthcare, sustainable mobility, the energy transition, the creation of more green public spaces and the fight against climate change, which is really toppling our agenda in Barcelona. In order to do that, Barcelona Barcelona has built a participatory democracy movement and an online platform that has been involving 400,000 citizens in setting the priorities and the government agenda. 70% of the government action plan of Barcelona come directly from citizens and they are engaging in setting their priorities and actionable um, projects and actions where they can participate and collaborate with the city government. Why do I tell you this? Because the shift in mobility is going to be about trust and it's going to be about citizen participation and the citizen trusting the government and the collaboration between government and private company in order to transform the city for the better. So when we think about the mobility revolution, we also think about energy transition and Barcelona is doing really a lot to transition to renewable energy. And this is why we have been building a renewable energy supplier with a digital grid. So at the moment, all the public buildings in the city of Barcelona are fueled from the energy that comes from a green solar power energy um, network, which is also integrated with the digital grid. And we're also stimulating a crowd lending campaign for citizens that can collectively invest in local solar energy. And we're going to decrease the emissions. We have a very big target in Barcelona which is a very ambitious climate plan. We declared a climate emergency and we want to lower the emissions, CO2 emissions of 50% by 2030 and become a carbon neutral city by 2050. By the way, there are other cities like Helsinki that are going to become a carbon neutral by 2035. And this is what we are doing. One of the main projects of Barcelona new mobility infrastructure is called Super.
super blocks. So we have been closing to traffic 12 districts of the city so that the cars can only get around the block and we recuperated 60% of public space and together with urbanists, designers and residents and also mobility operators, we've been building new green areas and rethinking mobility around these blocks. And we also implementing from January uh, the low emission zones, which means that we're going to get out of the city centers over 100,000 vehicles and we're going to redefine the mobility patterns in the city. Of course, you, as you can see, this takes a big comprehensive mobility plan where our objectives, and of course, if you look at 60% of the world population living in cities and the consumption of energy in cities is really dense, we need a, an ambitious plan with safe mobility, sustainable, equitable, and an efficient mobility. And we need really to get a kind of integration uh, approach in order to get there. So this is what it is today. I mean, it took me really an hour to get here from Berlin city center. Obviously, our cities, the model of today is we have higher congestion and higher pollution. In Barcelona, we have high density, 6,000 cars per uh, square kilometer. This is really a lot. And so we are working for to get to this model, like green, livable cities. Our objective is really to get a better cities for our citizens, where we have more space for pedestrians. And this is why we're implementing the Barcelona super blocks. We have a large scale accessibility, the air quality, how many people are dying because of pollution and poor air quality in city is really alarming. And we are working with our health commissioner in order to monitor and track our policies. Acoustic comfort and livable livability index in public space has to go up. So this is why also we are tripoling the number of bicycles in the city. So we have 300 kilometers of bicycle lanes and we're shifting to electric bicycles. In Barcelona, there are 6,000 bicycles and 1,000 are electric, but we're going to shift the entire uh, bicycle to electric mobility. And also, we are shifting the entire mobility, so all the bus fleet and everything into electric mobility. Nowadays, we have been boosting our recharging network, electric recharging network. We have 508, and we are building a lot of recharging network under underground. So in the highways, underground, and throughout the city because for us it's really about interoperability, open standards so that we can connect and multimodality. So people of course are gonna do are gonna be pedestrians, they're gonna use bikes, they're gonna need to have a very robust public infrastructure and public transit and then work out together with mobility operator how to shift and integrate the new mobility services. In order to get to that kind of model of the city, of course, we need urban tech for sustainability. And if you think about electric vehicles, the creation of data, more bicycle, the super blocks, uh, the energy transition, and the integration between private mobility and public mobility in a multimodal way, uh, basically, you need a lot of data. And you need an IT infrastructure which is pervasive. So Barcelona has 700 kilometers of fiber, which which is publicly owned. On top of that, we have a pervasive IoT network, sensor network, it's called Centilo, is open standards. And these allow us to do energy monitoring, noise monitoring, to, to ma manage the water infrastructure of the city. We have an urban lab, so this infrastructure, we open it up for startups and SMEs that can work with the infrastructure, with the data, and experiment new product that help the city to target real problems. And of course, we also want the sustainability to be 360 degrees, so there is garbage collection, waste management, and a proper uh, parking uh, management because you don't want to waste all your time looking for a parking slot. And so we're trying to, to make that more efficient. So the secret of this management of infrastructure is really our um, urban data analytic platform. It's a data lake, it's called CTOS, and we have a standardized ontology. So we can, we can basically do artificial intelligence with data coming from the infrastructure, from sensors, from people, and manage the city in a way that we can take better decisions which are evidence-based, and we can try to, to, to really act on evidence. And that's why I've appointed 
the first the chief data officer of Southern Europe, and we have a major office for data analytics, and there are 40 people that work there at the moment in Barcelona, and they do agreements, of course, with research centers, they work with private companies, in order to use the city data to take better decisions and to manage the city more efficiently. But we're also looking at data and algorithmic transparency. How can we make sure that we are managing the data in a way that is accountable for citizens? And in order to move to this uh, vision of data as a real city infrastructure that can help us tackle the big challenges of our future, we are also shifting to a model where citizens themselves have a lot of agency over the data. So we are building a decentralized and privacy enhancing infrastructure through the Decode project. It is based on a distributed ledger, also called blockchain, with a layer of cryptography that enables citizens to say what data they want to keep private, what data they want to share, with whom and on what terms. And the terms of sharing the data are set in an accountable and democratic way. At the moment, we are implementing this infrastructure. It's in place in Barcelona. Also, the city of Amsterdam is using the same technology. And we're using it for citizen uh, democratic participation, but also for IoT sharing of data. Citizens themselves are putting sensor data in their home to measure pollution or noise uh, monitoring because they want to have a better lifestyle. And we are taking this data, helping them to share the data in a secure way and integrate citizen data with the sensor platform of the city of Barcelona. This is our Barcelona Now platform. This allows us to have a personalized data commons dashboard where we can mix all the data that's coming from the city, controlled by you, by the citizen, in a privacy enhancing manner. And then you can control your data and you can share the attributes that you want to share about your behavior, maybe with the city, maybe not with Uber or an insurance companies, or maybe with other companies that help you achieve your goals and have privacy preserving um, rules. So, we are very conscious that building a smart city, it's really about creating this new pact on data. Data is the raw material of the, city, of the digital economy, and it is key to a mobility future. And this data is a city-critical infrastructure, like water, like electricity, like mobility. And so that's why we are reclaiming the data and bet on a model where in the future, who is going to own the data? Is it going to be only the over-the-top big corporation? Is it going to be states or it can be owned by citizens in a democratic way and we take care about the city data infrastructure to make it accountable and secure. So this is our open data and data strategy. We advocate for a new deal on data and we have also a practical framework to assess automated decision system when we use artificial intelligence, which is the case for all the cities now that are using automated decision system and try to ensure accountability. So so we, we use open standard, open API, and uh, access to historical data, which is anonymized and aggregated to take better decisions. This is our vision. It is about building a city data commons, a city data infrastructure, which requires investment and a new deal on data, and requires a strong collaboration between the the public sectors and cities and private operators that need to collaborate to make this a reality. And then you will see how you can collaborate with agencies that are managing critical infrastructure and services in the city, opening up the data infrastructure and allow also startup innovators and people that have the right idea and the right application to build on top of that. And of course, mobility data sharing. So cities now are requiring mobility services that include electricity scooters, bike, flea floating cars, the ride sharing apps, all of these uh, micro mobility boom applications to share data to manage uh, the city in a better way, more safe, uh, with equity and sustainability. And you know what, if we don't manage to get to this point, it's going to be very hard for city to regulate this new mobility infrastructure and service in a way that is equitable and that is open and create honest competition. But also integrates with public transport network that will allow cities to have an affordable, affordable mobility um, infrastructure. 
We are also, of course, working on next generation technology like 5G, and we're implementing 5G um, in, in the city of Barcelona and try to see, so this we are working with our partners, in particular SEAT, of course, in Barcelona, which is our main mobility partner. And we have a, a mobility lab where we collaborate with SEAT in finding out new solutions. And then, of course, with Telefonica and Vodafone. And we presented in the last Mobile World Congress the 5G connected cars and also a connected ambulance that allows to do a critical operation where doctor can also intervene um, remotely in the operation. So we're doing a lot of tests and this is going to be very important also for data sharing but to find out what are the mobility patterns of the future. In order to be innovative about this, so this is not just laying out the infrastructure but is really to work together uh, with private company to create the new mobility services and the solutions for the city problems, we created a, a urban innovation lab and Barcelona is now needing Mobilius which, which which is the European Commission uh, hub for future mobility. Uh, the European Commission has been investing 40 million on this venture, and we have 46 cities collaborating, 15 countries, 17 companies, and 18 research centers, which are looking at the future of mobility. So this is a great opportunity uh, to discover a new application, to discover and to work also with uh, small companies. So we're doing data challenges, uh, for, for instance, at the moment, we are doing a challenge where we're asking small companies to find out new technologies to produce renewable energies in payments in Barcelona. And then we are sharing this new application with New York City and with other cities around the world. So it's really a city challenge and we have a laboratory to do that. I also want to bring here in the role of the artist. So Barcelona has just won a prize uh, from the European Commission in a program that's called Starts that looks at collaboration between science, technology, and the arts for smart urban planning. And so we are working with artists and designers and architects that are building new solutions for planning and mobility. And you know what? The intervention of creative people, designers, and artists into this smart city application is critical because it allows for collaboration, citizen involvement, but also a collaboration that is broader than just technology and mobility operators. So this is really important uh, work for us. And then finally, how do we engage local communities in this whole process? I told you about how for us participatory democracy is really key in order to shift social behaviors and to change our cities. And with data, we are engaging local communities that are uh, providing data, uh, environmental data, they have civic participation, we help them to put sensors in the home and then to measure air quality and pollution. And we are setting up all these low key technology like open hardware toolkit based on Arduino, uh, working with the local Fab Lab in Barcelona so that citizens can really participate. And it's very important that citizens understand because in that way they can measure uh, the benefit of this technology, they can see that behavior is changing and they can be part of this transformation. So um, let me end my presentation by saying that, of course, Barcelona is open to be a digital hub for the future of mobility, but also to rethink our cities. I really believe that cities are becoming a laboratory for sustainable and democratic innovation. And in a moment where nation states really struggle to give answers to our big challenges, like how do we do energy transition? How do we fight climate change? How do we regain trust with our citizens? Cities are at the forefront front of experimenting, regulating through experimentation and testing, and be open, really, to become a, a hub. And we are going to have a Smart City Expo in November in Barcelona. And uh, with the, within the Smart City Expo, we have a Smart Mobility Congress. So you're all invite, uh, invited to join us there. And the Mo Metropolis Lab, together with SEAT, and the Mobilius Lab, which is always open for you to come to Barcelona and find out what we are doing. So my last sentence is, an network of cities which are joining and using data and technology for the common good, involving citizens and 
having partnership between the public sector and private companies that um, are open, uh, competitive, and uh, are basically looking for the common good is what we need for the transition and for the mobility transition. And the global network of digital cities can make the difference. I've been um, basically chairing a city CIO council with the CIOs, chief innovation officer from all around the world for the last uh, three years. And I can say that there is a real potential in cities coming together to make our cities more livable, more equitable, and smarter, which means empowering our citizens to live a better life. Thank you very much.